Okay. Uh, I was joking with the first Good morning. Today is Wednesday, October the 6th, 2021. Notice is hereby given that a regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Grimes County, Texas will be meeting this day at this time. It is 9 a.m. We're at the Grimes County Annex Building at 114 West Bovington Avenue in Anderson, Texas. This meeting has been called to order. I would ask if you would please stand for the invocation led by Charles Tompkins from Salem House of Blessings. Remain standing for the pledge to the U.S. flag and to the Texas flag. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for another chance. Thank you that you have kept us alive. Thank you that you woke us up this morning. Amen. And Father, we ask your blessings now upon this court and we will petition the higher court, which is your court, to supersede this court. And Father, we pray for your wisdom upon the judge, upon the commissioners, upon everyone that's a part of this, that everything that, that you have placed in order will be run according to your purpose. And we thank you now, Father, for each and every person, every problem that will be solved, and we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Would you please be seated? Also, if you uh, happen to have your phones with you, you might tone those down to vibrate or off. That would be appreciative. And I'm taking this one because I forgot to do mine. <laughs> Madam County Clerk, do we have any uh, public comments this morning? No, sir, I have not received Okay, we have no public comments, but we look forward to hearing comments from the public when they come in, sign up, and want to share with what's on their mind. With that, we will go to consent agenda items. Oh, all right. Commissioners, I, I heard this here first, so Commissioner, all right, Commissioner Walker. Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to share some really great news uh, on behalf of National Association of Counties. Uh, they have teamed up with the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, um, to help spread awareness of our broadband benefit program. Uh, it is www.getemergencybroadband.org. It is a benefit to eligible households up to $50 off their monthly internet bill during the pandemic. It also provides an additional benefit of up to $100 that can be used to purchase a connected device. So if you want to see if you qualify, um, you can go to www.getemergencybroadband.org. And this is a benefit of your federal government at work. I would, uh, as a small county, it's very hard for us to address everyone's needs. Uh, this is a benefit to all citizens of these United States. So I definitely would want to share that with you all, uh, being a rural community, we need help. Commissioner, was that a, a dot .com, dot .gov? Dot dot .org. Dot .org, thank you. I also shared it on my Facebook page and perhaps we can put it on the website. All right, thank you. Commissioner Dobianski. St. Mary's Catholic Church is having a blood drive Sunday from 8 to 1. Uh, the Men's Club will be cooking breakfast uh, also. Uh, if you don't have blood, they are testing for antibodies for COVID uh, with uh, MD Anderson. And the Anderson Food Pantry will be distributing food tomorrow here. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Walker. Any, any other? Comments, Commissioners? Then with that, we will go to consent agenda items. Three, four, five, six, seven.
agenda item number three, road and bridge consideration and possible approval of a water line installation permit for Wix Wixson Creek on County Road 150 and authorize the county judge as signatory. That's our attachment number three. Agenda item number four, consider and take action to approve the treasurer's list of claims and bills. And he put those in front of us this morning. Agenda, or gave us a revised one. Agenda number five, consider and take action to approve payroll that has been submitted. Agenda item number six, approve monthly, excuse me, approve monthly report submitted by the county treasurer for August 2021 and authorize advertisement of affidavit of same in accordance with local government code 114.026. That's page five of our agenda. And then finally, last consent agenda item number seven, consider and take action to approve budget amendments and or line item transfers. And I believe we have one, two, three line item transfers with the amounts and the reasonings there. Comments, questions, or a motion? I don't have any. Um, with that being said, I'd like to make a motion that we approve consent agenda items Four, five, six, and seven. Second. There's a motion before the court on consent agenda items number three, four, five, six, and seven by Commissioner Barbara Walker, seconded by Commissioner David Dobianski. Is there further discussion or comment? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. That vote is 5 0. We'll go to agenda item number eight focusing families. Maria Lackey, community outreach trainer, and Mary Rodriguez, legal advocate. So I guess, Maria, you brought your attorney with you. Is that the way it works? If, if you don't mind coming up to the podium. Uh, and the agenda item says, number eight, consider and take action to approve the proclamation designating the month of October 2021 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And that is our attachment number eight. Good morning, it's good to have you with us. Good morning, thank you. Okay. Whereas domestic violence is a crime that affects all aspects of a community with far reaching consequences for the primary victims, women and children. And whereas domestic violence is particularly devastating because it is so often occurs and the privacy of the home, which is meant to be a place of shelter and security. And whereas thousands of women and children in Texas are victims of domestic violence offenses, which violate their basic human rights to live with respect, dignity, and freedom from fear and violence. And whereas we are committed to ending domestic violence, in our state through public education and services by helping victims find a We should move forward with all citizens, government officials, law enforcement agencies, health professionals, social services providers, educators, clergy and community le leaders to end domestic violence that threatens so many. Our efforts to help victims of domestic violence will always be one of our most important tasks. Through teamwork and cooperation, we will continue to provide needed services to the victims and survivors of domestic violence. Now, therefore, the Commissioner's Court of Grimes County, Texas, does oh I'm sorry I did not I was I think yeah I can okay that's fine it says now therefore we county judge and commissioners court of Grimes County in recognition of the important work being done by the domestic violence awareness program do hereby proclaim the month of October as domestic violence awareness month and urge all citizens to become aware of the tragedy of domestic violence and become actively involved in working together to be eliminated, to eliminate domestic violence. It was ordered by the court on a motion. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Uh, 
uh, approved the proclamation as October 2021 um, domestic violence awareness. So it was ordered by the court on motion by Commissioner Barbara Walker, duly seconded by Commissioner Philip Cox, that the above and foregoing proclamation be and the same is hereby approved by all in favor say aye. 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 I oppose by a 5 0 members present, zero members oppose. And with that, in witness thereof, I hereto set my hand and seal of the office this sixth day of October 2021. I'm proud of the work that y'all do, but in all honesty, I'm sorry we have to have y'all as an organization, and I hope you take that in the right way. Yes. But in the world that we live, uh, for you folks to uh, do what you do day after day after day, because y'all see kind of the, the dark side, the, the difficult side, mm -hmm. and it's got to take a toll on y'all and uh, hang in there yes. and know that this court supports you. Thank you. 100% because we've got a 5 0 vote on it. <laughs> we'll give this to the county clerk and let her have that endorsement. Is there anything else that you wanted to share or any of your colleagues that are with you? Um, yes, I just wanted to take a moment to share um, a few statistics um, from the Texas Council on Family Violence um, for the year of 2020. Only the Grimes County numbers are better than anybody else's. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> In 2020, the conditions of the coronavirus pandemic increased isolation and economic stressors that compounded the impact of abuse, including frequency and severity of violence. TCFV documented the highest number of intimate partner homicides in the last decade. 228 men and women were killed by their intimate partners. Intimate partner homicide perpetrators also killed 31 family, friends, and bystanders, and also injured 17. The majority of homicides were committed by a perpetrator with a firearm. The Harris County had the highest um, number of fatalities by counties in the state of Texas. There were 68 counties in the state of Texas where victims were killed by an intimate partner. Harris County had the highest number with 37. Dallas County had the second highest number, 22 fatalities. Tarrant County had 18. Bexar County had 17. Denton had eight. Fort Bend had seven. And El Paso had um, six. So I just want to share those statistics. Um, I'm glad we weren't on your list. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. Focusing families, we serve um, five counties, Austin, Grimes, Waller, Washington, and North, Northwest Harris County. Mm -hmm. We provide legal services. We have a counseling service program. We have community outreach, and we have a prevention team that works with high school students. So. Thank you once again for having us and have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we'll go to agenda item number nine. Navasota Grimes County Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, Mr. Johnny McNally. Number nine, consider and take action to review the contract for economic development services between Grimes County and the Navasota Grimes County Chamber of Commerce and authorize the county judge's signatory our attachment number nine morning sir good morning judge are you, are you going to start us off with a story or a joke uh, I could but <laughs> maybe I shouldn't follow up doing following, the contract the, following the last speaker it's difficult um, <clears throat> I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you today the contract is um, up for uh, consideration for renewal I wanted to start off by saying the Chamber of Commerce is very active and um, very strong. Um, we've uh, recently completed a job, fair, a job fair and business expo and honestly we, 
we've we've not slowed down in spite of the COVID situation and so forth. We've adjusted to uh, our mission has sort of changed somewhat during that period, but we are as active or more active than ever uh, since I've been uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. We currently have 350 members, which is the most members we've had since I've been here. So the membership is on the rise, our activities are on the rise, but I really want to focus the comments to the contract that you're considering. There are certain uh, targets for me to achieve in this contract, and I just want to touch on each one briefly and give you um, a little recap of where we have been and where we're heading. Sure. Starting off with maintaining an economic development web economic development website. I built that website myself. It's uh, a living thing. We're constantly adding information to it. And um, as a matter of fact, we, uh, we've j we're just about to add a brand new component to it, which I'll get to in a second. It's a resource that people do use approximately, I think 60 visits per month that I can document. Um, we have referrals that go to there. We have printed material that directs people there. When I'm speaking to folks, I often ask them to take a look at that website because it is a, there's a lot of information that people can access through that economic development website, which is www.grimescoed, which is Grimes County Economic Development.com. Maintain a business development guide is the second item. We've done that really, I, I, I did build a paper version, but it really wasn't utilized so much as the links in the website. So there are many links within the website to get folks the information that they need. And your website is very informative too, and you've got it laid out very well. So what a lot of times my website points to your website because you've got information that's constantly being updated through your website as well. But we try to keep our links to, I don't like to link to static documents, I like to link to places that where the information is constantly being um, refreshed. Maintain a development, a, develop, a developable property database. We've been using a database through Entergy where we're able to load properties and so forth. But I've recently signed up for a program called Zoom Prospector and I want to do a presentation to y'all but it'll have to be another meeting and we'll have to access the projector and um, it does what the Entergy site does where I can load the properties and I can put information about them but it also gives you as the user the ability to look at a site let's say there's a piece of property that you're thinking about developing on and you can see what services are available there how what's approximately to a railroad track um, you can draw a radius around that location and look at information like how many welders are within that three mile radius or what is the median income within 10 miles um, all that information is at your fingertips as a user it's relatively expensive to sign up for it, but I thought it's such a valuable tool, especially one that I really don't have to hold your hand to use. It's so user friendly. So I will make another presentation to y'all on that um, software and I'll give you the link ahead so you can play with it. But we're just getting that launched. I just recently signed that contract. And is that mainly designed, Johnny, for a commercial view? Yes. It's okay. strict. I, I just put commercial properties. Yeah. And if I a lot of times I hear properties that are available but they're not in the open market and so I have the ability to make them private um, within this within this view where you wouldn't necessarily see it but if I'm responding to a proposal I can include it among the other properties and this software also gives me the ability to create those proposals within that software where all the pictures and the information and demographics all populate automatically, I can have multiple properties, and I can compare our community to other communities. Uh, if I want to do, if I know that they're looking at Grimes County and they're looking at <coughs> Kern, for instance, I can do a comparison of the two communities. It really is a, a great software. 
host economic development update meetings with local stakeholders. I do that through a number of different ways. We have our state of the city meeting each year, which uh, gives a lot of folks an opportunity to hear uh, what's happening in Navasota, what's happening in Grimes County, what's happening with Navasota ISD. And I usually try to bring someone in to talk about just the general economic condition of the county from a, an outsider's perspective. Do um, you have a date set for that? I do, yeah. Of course, there's a new city manager coming in, so the state is subject to Just tell to who change. you want to go with it. <laughs> I'm going to try that and see where it leads me. And you also have someone uh, that represents the regional, Brazos Valley. Uh, he comes down and do a presentation. Matt right Prohaska. A lot of times I've asked Matt to do that. State of the city, I've got slated for January the 12th, 2022. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we also host realtor developer events, and in this past year we've held two of those, and those are always very informative. Again, we, we generally present what we've got going on in Grimes County, but this year, for instance, we focused on Todd Mission and had the Todd Mission City Manager come in to talk about development that's happening down there. We also host regional economic development uh, events here throughout the year. In ways of communication, I attend city council meetings. I present updates to groups. I have private calls with, you know, particularly Commissioner Walker, since she's the liaison among your group, and keep her informed of things that are in the offing, sometimes with the county judge. I've reached out to most of you on different projects that have been coming up throughout the year to keep you apprised or to invite you to attend things. Um, try to keep you informed as best as possible. I send weekly communications <laughs> wherein I include economic development activity for that week. So you can see week to week what's happening. And I don't give you everything. I'm just giving you major points in those emails. I had a, a meeting, for instance, this week with the Todd Mission City Manager because they do have a lot of things going on down there. And um, there's just a, a lot to discuss with regards to Todd Mission. I have a meeting with Plannersville planned here soon. And I try to do outreach throughout the community, throughout the county, as part of my um, mission for this group. Serve as the Economic Development Liaison for Grimes County. I've uh, we are the key point of contact for dozens of inquiries, um, large and small. We've got folks coming in asking, you know, I'm a, just this week, I'm a woman-owned business. What kind of grant opportunities can I apply for? And I've had um, here recently businesses that are looking to go into the Navasota Industrial Park and looking for suggestions on uh, different incentives that may qualify for. So it's from large to small. I also appear on television, I wouldn't say regularly, but occasionally to talk about uh, the economic development situations in Grabs County and the radio. Uh, so I do act as the liaison for Grimes County some, uh, on some occasions uh, as far as media is concerned. Strategically identify and pursue target businesses and industry. We continue working um, on this with through the cooperation of CETA, which is Central East Texas Alliance, that's a regional mm -hmm. economic development group, Brazos Valley EDC and other area resources, we're, we're really positioned well with communications through them and we share information, we share leads, and it's very beneficial to have these mutual relationships. CETA is the organization you're president of? I'm president of, yes. How, how long does that term go? It'll be forever until someone else steps up and says, I want to be president. Well, as long as you can promote our county before those counties, I think forever is a good amount of time. Uh, yes, I won't say that publicly. Okay, well, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we do, we haven't had a great number of events that we can attend on specific industries that we were hoping to do because of COVID. A lot of things got postponed and canceled, and they still continue to be. But we do attend Retail Live, for instance. I attended that in September. And the ICSC 
show. This is mainly dealing with retail folks who are looking for places to develop. And when I come back from those retail shows, I reach out to the communities and say, okay, I've, I know what might fit in your community, but let's talk about what you actually are looking for. And so I uh, try to match what might work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, because the, the retailers have certain demographics they're looking for as far as traffic count and population within a certain distance. Host business and real estate development events. Um, we have presented updates directly to retailers on two occasions I mentioned earlier this year. Um, we have good relationships with a lot of the realtors in this area and uh, I rely on them to be good resources when I have an opportunity come to me and I'm looking for a particular uh, site. I have, I know I have a good group of realtors I can call upon to help me identify sites that could fit their needs. Trade show presence, we, uh, I do attend the shows. Uh, we have, we, and as I mentioned, we've had fewer in-person shows to attend, but Texas Rural Challenge is one that we try to make every year, and the other shows I just mentioned to you. Provide quarterly updates to the county. I do try to appear to the commissioner's court every quarter and to the other entities to give them an update and I communicate frequently through emails and other communications. In summary, I would say that, well, I don't even want to summarize yet. I don't know how much time I've got. Um, we Your do get, to summary. well, we, very good. We've got, uh, we get a lot of leads from the governor's office. I can tell you we, uh, when I looked at it yesterday, I counted 57 projects that we considered that we're looking at Grimes County. And um, we were able to meet the needs for 10 of those, and I did responses for 10. And one project did complete, that uh, being Blue Jay Solar, didn't come from the governor's office, but it was a large project that came in. Um, there are others that completed that um, in the industrial park, which did not require uh, going down the road of a abatement or something like that where we had discussed that at one time we had a recent site visit in August from one of those leads that may still come to fruition so we're happy that those leads are producing some response we've had dozens of business inquiries regarding funding just general advice how to do business plans and I tend to use the SBDC as a resource but there are other resources we have too to help folks develop a business plan, look at competitive analysis, look at their supply chain, and help them get launched. You know, sometimes they just want to come in and say, I, I just need money. Oh, well, I, I wish I could help you, but uh, I'm not that person. Um, let's see if there's anything. Oh, as, as far as BRE, business retention and expansion, and I'll say attraction. Um, We've worked with businesses in the industrial park. Um, occupants in the industrial park for various expansion projects. We have one that's sort of uh, on the, maybe on the back burner, is not an activity recently, but then we've got another one just this week where there's a lot of activity. And we'll see where that leads. We've assisted with training, offering training to their employees through different programs that we have available. Uh, we had a recent visit to the TMPA, the Gibbons Creek project, uh, this year as they're doing a reclamation on that. Mike Dunn out there at Shara System uh, Solutions is underway with that reclamation project. And there's a, they're, they've got that place sectioned off and ready to sell and develop. So that's a three-year reclamation project, uh, project, but there are pro properties already getting scooped up out there so I'll report back to y'all on what that's looking like okay. but I use to me that's a that's a good resource for us I mean, there's a there are a lot of assets out there that a company can use that's a big property yes sir. so as far as attraction of it I've covered expansion and retention we're in frequent contact with the larger employers. I wouldn't say frequent, I say regular contact with the larger employers to make sure that there are no, um, <coughs> no issues that may interrupt their ability to do 
there, there are certain limitations we have as far as that goes with the economies and so forth. If they have supply chain issues out of China, I'm not going to be able to help a great deal. Um, but we want to know if they're having any issues and what that's looking like, just to make sure that they're, they're not leaving Grimes County for anything we can assist with. And I'm not aware of anything that's happening like that. But we do maintain a good relationship with the larger employers. Um, and we involve them in educational discussions to make sure that the training is being offered, um, that the educational opportunities through the schools are being are such that will benefit them when they're looking to hire. So what I'm saying is a high school graduate not going to college can find a job locally. We try to match up the skills that they're learning in high school with the skills they need in, in our businesses that are here. Um, COVID has been, we've, we've started doing COVID testing back in February. Um, and I'm putting this under economic development because it is a, this is an impact to our local businesses including the small businesses, which of which we have many. We do COVID testing. Um, we start off with a COVID response and getting them the information they needed to qualify for PPP or EIDL loans and folks who could help them fill out the paperwork. And people even came into the office and sat down and helped them fill out the paperwork. Once they got that done, we helped them to qualify for forgiveness of the PPP loans. And um, the governor's office instituted a COVID testing program with Chambers of Commerce back in January and I started testing in February for the chamber members, their employee employees and their families. Um, it's ebbed and flowed and I can tell you here recently we've had a whole lot of activity out there and in one week I've tested 43 people I believe is the maximum I've tested in one week. That's a lot of people for Johnny by himself to be testing in one week. And our positivity rate, I can tell you, has hovered between 20 and 30%. So it's not this little 5% that gets people concerned. It's 20 to 30%. And I know I'm not a big sample size, but there are a lot of positive tests coming out right now. Sure. Even this morning, I tested two people before I came to Commissioner's Court, and they were both positive. So there's a lot of positive COVID tests, uh, COVID tests that we're showing up with. So anyway, that in a nutshell, I will do my summary now. I feel like it's been a good relationship that the Chamber of Commerce has been able to accommodate your needs for economic development. As always, we could use more money to have more resources, but when that time comes, hopefully y'all consider that. But in the mean, in, in the meanwhile, I encourage you to let's put this contract in play for another year continue the uh, relationship. Sure. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, with that being said, I'd like to applaud the um, efforts of uh, Mr. McNally. He's all over the place uh, promoting Grimes County, promoting tourism, uh, he's promoting um, job training, and he uh, assists all of our businesses in, in, in the retention of staying in business particularly during this COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, I applaud you, you're a brave young man to do COVID testing. Uh, I've seen the increase go from, like you said, tremendous every time I pass. You're only doing it, well, you do it more than a, two hours a day of party. I, you did it this morning. Officially, I do it from 10 to 11 in the morning and from three to four in the afternoon. But uh, for instance, this morning, I thought I might be tied up here and these people really need COVID tests. So I said, well, I'll meet you up there at eight o'clock. And I, I mean, I'll, I try to work with people. And um, with that being said, I want to say to you, I personally appreciate you being there for the businesses in Grimes County because we, we need to keep going uh, as we all benefit from sales taxes and all of those type of things. So, um, we all have not asked for an increase over the last, I guess, how many years has it been? I think this is the this is the fifth, I believe, fifth yeah. the fifth contract. I think it started in sixteen, October of sixteen. So this is really the fifth contract, and we did consider a, an increase this year based on um, activities. The, well, the, the I had plans to 
but uh, I had plans to expand what we were able to do, but it would take money, and I was trying to figure out a way that we could finance it through the um, through the American new American Rescue Plan. Yes, thank you, ARPA. Um, I don't know that that's possible this year, but at a minimum, I think that this is a we ought to continue this. There are no questions, and I'd like to entertain a motion to approve uh, the economic development services between Crimes County and the Navasota Chamber of Commerce and to authorize the county judge to see the floor. Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number nine by Commissioner Barbara Walker, second by Commissioner Philip Cox. Are there any comments? I have one. All right. Commissioner Walker, do you want to continue to be the liaison in regards to this contract with Mr. McNally, or is there somebody else on the court that it's, is it your turn to be that liaison? Well, I don't see people jumping in the line ahead of me. Will you continue in that fashion? I think my COVID testing is scaring you around the office. I don't dare cough right now. All right, that, that will not change the motion. That would leave the contract as it is. Is there any further comment or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. I have uh, two contracts here, or two copies of the same contract. <laughs> okay, uh, Johnny, once you get your yeah. the uh, president, president assignments, we'll get those back, we can get them. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, agenda item number 10 is Chamber of Commerce update. Was that inclusive into your discussion with nine? Let's just say. Thank you, sir. All right. With that, regarding our agenda, we go now to number 11, up uh, Grimes County Building Maintenance Manager Al Peeler, update on ongoing projects, Grimes County Jail and Grimes County Justice Center. Good morning. Good morning. We'll start at the jail. Jail door project is going. Um, we've been working on it the last four days. It's been going. Uh, what we have found with low voltage wires <laughs> to the door, they go about a foot and they splice it, and then they might go another two foot and splice it. And so, it when we started the door project, I thought, well, we'll be okay because our wiring is still good. We'll work on that at another time. Um, we our system is up and running. We just have to everything. Um, whoever put the other system in didn't use different colored wires. They just ran all black. <laughs> so <laughs> um, that's taking us some time to figure out where, when, and who, where it goes, and stuff like that. So today, hopefully, knock on wood, we should wrap that project up. We got some software <clears throat> tweaks we got to do. The jailers do like things on it don't like things on it. it takes them too slow to interlock and stuff like that that's all software reconfiguration it's a good system we made a good choice last year we're getting it done um, and now we can expound off the system that we got and putting new systems in the software we have so did you say you're going to complete that soon or today um hopefully today but i'm, I'm knocking on wood that we do it today we only got five doors that we're trying to locate wires on and then we'll start picking up another project as wiring we're, we'll do wiring in in sections we won't do the whole thing because i don't have that in the budget um plumbing's been i hate to bring anything up about plumbing plumbing is is we've got a handle on it and we're doing preventive maintenance and it's taken over jail is coming around our humidity control we found some more issues on that that dropped us some more levels on that uh, we just got to replace some electric motors at first i went into the judge going <laughs> uh 
we got exhaust fans that we're going to have to change, and they're at 40,000. Um, but I know a, a maintenance person at the Sabine Power Plant that will be sending us parts for the exact same stuff that we got for exactly zero dollars. Um, so we're going to take her um, good charity and we're going to put it to good use. Um, that's about it for the jail. We, we do have some major projects coming up, but we haven't, I haven't got them around yet. Um, we, um, our biggest one is going to be dispatch coming, moving dispatch and getting that in next. That's going to be our other big projects this year. So, um, and we got donations on block too. So that will help the cost. Okay, any questions on the jail? It's moving up long. I mean, it didn't get this. You know, are you tying the jail parking lot to the Justice Center parking lot? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, okay, what I mean, do you know when the jail portion of the parking lot or the sheriff's office portion of the parking lot is going to be completed out? Uh, they're leaving that till the end because of it's solid ground and where we're pouring now is not so stable. So in good weather, um, we can go ahead and pour the not so stabilized okay. ground. That, that one's hard. We took a lot of base out there and then we lime stabilized it. So if we just get them, these little clouds that flow by and dump a little drizzle on us, it's not gonna be so hard to pour that than it is like some of our soft ground that didn't have any base on it. Is that correct, Harry? Did I say that right? Sounds good to me. I might be coming <laughs> civil. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've learned a lot off these guys. So, with saying that, we'll jump right into the new building. Unless there's questions about the jail. Any questions? Okay. So, two week look ahead, it's pretty obvious of what we got. We had an on site meeting uh, yesterday. Commissioner Mallet, Commissioner Cox, they were both in attendance. They seen some of the things that I was facing. Um, it's going, but it's going slow. And um, it's just back orders. It's it's people getting sick. It's, it's just a menagerie of things and why it's going slow. We... Um, we also changed some stuff that we didn't like. Commissioner Cox and I had talked about it with Commissioner Mallet. We got there. Um, I called them knee knockers under the built ends. Um, we finally got that. We metal bracketed it and it sucked back to the wall so they won't even notice that. We talked about um, why there wasn't drawers in the built ends because that was, has been a hot topic for me. Um, Michael seemed to think there was and then when he got to his drawings it wasn't but they're high enough for um, rolling file cabinets underneath we we've, we've checked that so that will be a thing that I don't think anybody in department heads knew about for one and two they might have to come back to commissioner's court and ask for that or something in furniture but that will be later in the process. But that's to be, that's one of them hidden costs that we didn't know. Um, Build-ins are coming right now. The, the problems we have right now are a uh, millwork guy. He's going as fast as he could, can. Michael is a, was a little irritable and said, hey, how about getting getting in get to hire more crews i don't know i haven't heard their final determination on that um pmps we um seventeen thousand we saved in uh by moving some of the landscaping around <clears throat> and this will not reflect the pmp uh report will not reflect that because i didn't sign it until yesterday it's a $17,000 savings on some of the stuff we shifted around. We didn't want to disturb the memorial tree at the sheriff's department 
because that's just not a good idea. Um, then we did hallway pews for $13,275. So <clears throat> you're going to, you're going to see after that, you're going to see a $4,000 savings after they offset each other. They'll re $4,000 off our contract price. Um, we got 154 rain delay days, um, rain and mud and uh, COVID and stuff like that. We got 154 days um, logged as of now. All in all, it's going along. The building is a is doing well. It's built well. Uh, it's just a slow process right now. We're in the, the, you know, I can walk that building 30 times a day and find something that I don't like. So, um, and I make sure Todd knows about it. Uh, make sure nine times out of 10, I'll say something. Todd's already seen it. Um, I wanted the meeting on site yesterday uh, so that the commissioners could both see where the job is. Um, so, picking up the base? No. I just think right now it's, we're picked, that's one thing that we talked about yesterday is, um, but there's some things that's holding them back, door hinges, microchips, stuff like that. Some of the doors that we have now, our microchips won't be in until March. So we're going to have to do it on key locks. There's a handful of doors like that. We're going to have to have keys to certain people because of the back back orders. And that's that's I got at the jail. I also have um, some things out in my fire system. It's eight to twelve weeks out. So I have to deal with the red tagged fire panel because so. It, my whole point in saying that is, if I didn't see it in any other projects that I was, I would I would question them harder about it. But I'm seeing that play out all through the industry right now. So they're not they're not telling me a fib. They're not trying to buy time. They're not. It's just it's what it it is right now. Well, the bottom line question is, what's your current? start moving day uh, November middle of November maybe right. I mean that that question was asked um, I think they're uncertain uh, at best to say that I think my goal and I and the commissioners can tell you I pressed them and told them look I have stuff coming in at this time, Commissioner Cox brought up, hey, if we start m moving our furniture in, when it, if this office isn't cleaned, who's going to clean it? And I, I, I believe they said they would. So um, I'm not switching any of our deliveries. And, and, and I was pretty straight up forward about that. So I'm hoping we can punch some of them offices to get our stuff in and get it set up and then when we move in they're just boom it's all done but right now it's just well I knew you, I know you had built a fairly dynamic schedule with IT uh -huh. so that that was a coordinated effort with them but then if you've got furniture that's not coming in or chips or whatever right. else you run into I guess Y'all are going to have to be flexible on that IT schedule, but we were trying to get the courts in and up and operational in their service groups as soon as possible. Is it still kind of the plan? Yeah, the plan is to move the courts in first. Okay. But right now the courts are last to be finished. So our <laughs> we're not jiving. Yeah. Um, and that's all millwork. That's all mill work. You know, after they get everything in, now we got to we got to stain and then bag the area and then shoot all the clear coat on it. Um, so 
it's not jiving right now and this is where my job comes in to go okay look this is how we have to do it like the pews that we just I just approved they got a 90 to 120 day lead time well that don't put them in there until January but that for me and I believe the courts would say this the pews on the outside I'll throw some chairs out there for now I mean so we're gonna we're if it's on our side we're gonna I'm gonna go to the people that is gonna be using it and say look I can't supply this right now but this is when it's supposed to come in do you want to move now okay. and that's how I that's why it's taken me so long to get my and we got furniture that has been backed out till 11 14 and that's just the industry right now it's just everything it seems like you order something and it gets pushed back and it gets pushed back so to stand up here and say it's all call your fault I can't do that so I know we're anxious believe me there ain't anybody in this room more anxious than me so we'll get there I just don't want to rush them rush them now when it's the the minute finishes that that makes this building I want them to do it right I don't want us to miss something Commissioner Cox or Commissioner Mallet anything else y'all want to add to his report or update I mean, I mean, I just make a comment that we need to be mindful of the situation that we've had uh, building the, the facility because of all of the non-traditional um, delays such as COVID, Freezing. supply chain, labor. Um, not to say we don't need to press them and make sure they're progressing at a, at a rate that's acceptable, but uh, I'm same page with Al, I think we need to you know, keep in mind there have been some obstacles and sure. I don't want to rush at the very end here. And, uh, well, that one week of freeze put us six weeks behind on getting climate control in the building. So. Right. So. I just don't want to rush. You know, there's some things like caulking around a window, brick to windowsill. You know, that's a very easy thing to overlook. And then they're out of here and we have to call them back or... I, I didn't catch it until 60 days out and then I'm out there trying to caulk a window. I just want to make sure that we do a thorough punch. We make sure our building is exact of what Grimes County taxpayers paid for. Sure. And the thing that he stated about finish work, you want that finish work done right. And right. It, it takes a lot of time to do that, to do it right. Absolutely. Millworks, millwork is a tough, tough occupation. Well, and talking about the punch list, he mentioned that. Walking around up there yesterday, I mean, there's a lot of things, little bitty things that have to be done to get $10 million worth. I mean, you know, people bump the walls after the drywall. There's a hole they got. I mean, that's all over the place because they're still working. Sure. So I get it. A lot of things that have to be done. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a great day. With that, we'll go to agenda item number 12, Grimes County Sheriff's Department, Chief Todd Green. Todd Green. Consider and take action to, uh, consider and take action to approve the auto theft task force agreement between Grimes County and Montgomery County, attachment number 12. Chief, oh, there he is, okay. Chief, you're up on the uh, auto theft task force agreement? Yes. Again, another agreement that it's disappointing we have to have, but I guess it's good that we do have it. Good morning. morning. This is our um, annual interlocal agreement between Montgomery County and Grimes County for the auto theft task force position. We've been doing it for over 20 something years. Um, the, it's grant funded um, through obviously to the state with collection from the insurance that everybody pays for um, on their insurance bill. Uh, current uh, agreement is the standard that we've had for several years. It runs through September 1st, 2021 to August 31st, 2022. Um, just uh, the amount of the grant numbers have changed some, but uh, the amount Grimes County has to contribute $10,000 stays the same. 
So that provides, obviously, our investigator uh, the French benefits in vehicle and computer-related equipment. Um, our investigator assists with doing all the trailer VIN inspections, the 68 days, new uh, restore vehicles that need to get new titles and stuff. He forms all those in Grimes County for our citizens and some surrounding uh, citizens. Plus, he does a lot of our auto theft cases. Right. And as the county's growing, obviously more cases are coming. So we are using our investigator more in Grimes County than previously we have, in, uh, since, especially since the beginning. But obviously, it's a program we definitely support and would further like to continue. And this 10000 was submitted in your budget, and it was approved back on the 15th of September, correct, Madam Auditor? Yes. Okay. So. That's right there. <clears throat> and Todd, you're keeping um, him within the pay scale. You're, even though we have to give them a number prior to our budget being approved. Yeah, the, the way this year has worked out and the pay scale worked out, yes. So we're going to keep him at the pay scale. Yeah. With that, I'm going to make a motion to approve the Auto Theft Task Force Agreement between Grimes County and Montgomery County. Second. There is a motion before the court on agenda item number 12 by County Judge Joe Powell, seconded by Commissioner David Dobienski. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Chief, uh, you're also agenda item 13. Consider and take action to approve the health services agreement contract between Grimes County and Southern Health Partners. This uh, contract is our medical provider contract for uh, the jail. Um, it comes up once a year. This is the minimum to our original contract. Um, as we presented our budget, the cost went up uh, a little bit this year to 128749.92. Would you say that number again? 128. Yes, $128,749.92. Thank you. Um, that was reflected in our budget and it currently is in our budget to pay, pay for the. Also, the other change in there was the reimbursement rate. So when we exceed our number, the average daily attendance is 65. It went from 132 to 136. $1.32 to $1.36 uh, per inmate for each day that we're over. Um, plan on trying to migrate that as much as possible. Question, when, when we house uh, inmates from other counties, does that go against our 65 it, it'll, it'll be against, against our 65 count. That price is usually included in our um, price that we're charging okay. to help cover that. Now, as far as like you know, medical and stuff like that, they have to pay on their right, own. Right, right. Um, we are looking at doing a contract uh, with Coryell County, currently to house, you know, 20 something prisoners. But um, they also use SHP. So we're uh, in discussion right now. So that won't reflect okay. on our count. So it, it, it shouldn't change that. Issue. Well, in a dollar 32 to a dollar 36 really doesn't make or break the bank. but. Uh, over a period of time, it still is money, and just to make sure that um, but we're not doing it at a, we're not helping the other counties at a loss. Correct. Yes, okay. that, that was part of the discussion I had with our jail administrator when he went into that Good. discussion. There are a couple of things uh, on this contract. There's one little section uh, we're trying to clear up a little bit on how they actually take the average daily count, some wording issues that the county attorney has pointed out. So this will obviously be uh, pending as long as those work out and then uh, you can be the signature on that once those questions get totally changed out. We changed some just a while ago on the phone, but there's still, uh, my understanding, of another little tweak in the words that we need to. Okay. So the county attorney is still looking at the contract? Uh, Judge, no, this is an amendment. It's only two pages. Uh, you should have it as part of your packet. The section 7.2 talks about how to determine the average daily inmate resident population. Uh, they're just the phrase um, of the month, uh, consistent time each day of the month. It says a head count will be done and divided by the number of counts taken. 
but it doesn't say how many days the headcount will be done. And so I'm just asking to add the phrase of the month in there. And so you can approve it um, in the form that it is with that minor change. Thank you, sir. And I've talked to them about that, and they're making that change. I just don't have the new sure. copy yet. Okay. Then with that, I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, health services agreement contract between Grimes County and Southern Health Partners. Is there a second? <coughs> There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 12 by County Judge Joe Faust, seconded by Commissioner Barbara Walker. Is there further discussion? With that change, I assume. Correct. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Chief, thank you very much. Thank you. And you'll be in charge of getting that paperwork around for signatures and all. Yes, yeah. I'm going to stay until... Fine. I'll thank you, sir. Enough. All right. We'll now go to agenda item number 14, um, Emergency Management Services Coordinator David Lilly. I don't think David's present today. Uh, but review and approve the donation of real property form, which allows the county to turn over the county-owned building, which is located at 10802 Spur 234, to the Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department to be used for a controlled burn exercise to train their members on structure fire response and authorize the county judge. See attachment number 14. Commissioners, uh, when we were talking about relocating the EMS trailer, that uh, the EMS facility that's down in Stoneham, uh, along with our solid waste, there was a lot of movement, and then there was an old dilapidated community building that I think, uh, well, Commissioner Walker, did you not get some prices on demolition for that? And it was ten to $12,000. We made the determination that the building really couldn't be moved. We made the determination that the materials were not really salvable for use elsewhere or anything. Uh, so the idea came up, well, why don't we donate this to one of our VFDs to let them uh, do some practice training or let them do some training and practice on real structure fires and let's let them burn the thing down instead of spending ten, twelve thousand dollars on uh, having a demo crew. We'd probably clean the site for maybe two or three thousand dollars when it's all said and done. Anyway, Commissioner Walker has been working uh, with David Lilly and has been working with Chief Vickers out of the Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department. So, Commissioner Walker, do you, do you have any, Chief, do you want to come up to the podium? I'm inviting him to explain to the public uh, what their exercise is going to be. So thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, members in our uh, response district ask us to assist them with demolition of old buildings. Uh, Physical demolition is not without its own problems because eventually you have to do something with the waste. Uh, and we have, uh, uh, in the past, uh, developed a program where the building can be do donated to the volunteer fire department. We will prep the building for a training and as the last uh, evolution, we'll actually ignite the building and burn the building to the ground. Uh, what we have to make sure is that we're not the victim uh, of, of a fraud or of a crime, which means the building cannot have insurance on it, it can't have any covenants on it, it's got to be owned free and clear without any obstruction, and that the property owners are aware that when we are done, there will be nothing but a pile of ash and whatever uh, uh, non-combustibles may have been in the building, which is usually wire, uh, pipe, metal, nails, uh, some porcelain restroom fixtures, uh, and as long as they're as long as they're uh, okay with that and they agree to it, uh, we will go ahead and, and uh, proceed with our uh, our training program. Uh, this particular structure presents some unique uh, situations that you don't normally see in a residential home. Uh, we had a, a request for donation uh, work uh, about six months ago, and when we went out and surveyed the the building, the building was structurally unsound. Uh, if it's structurally unsound, you walk into it with a, with a hazard to start with. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, we, when, uh, when we agree to take un undertake these uh, operations, we make sure that the building is at least structurally sound so that we don't have to worry about people falling through floors in a smoky area while they're doing a, a, a training search. Sure. So uh, we, we reserve this, this service, I guess you could call it, uh, to buildings that are structurally sound for that reason. What we do in this is not without its own hazard. Uh, this particular building presents a, a unique set of circumstances because it has a large open undivided area in it, much like you would find in a church or in a, in a gymnasium or, or in a large uh, gathering area. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of fire load and a lot of fuel because a lot of the interior materials, the, the uh, pews, uh, uh, whatever else you would have in a church have either been removed or have been salvaged out of there so basically it's it's like an empty barn and uh, it presents a unique uh, set of circumstances it also burns in a unique fashion uh, usually these burn with the ceiling collapse or the roof collapse first before the walls will come in uh, this building has a sheet metal roof it's a corrugated steel roof uh, and as such, doing uh, ventilation practices on this roof are, are hazardous and problematic. Uh, you can cut through a sheet of uh, uh, sheet metal, uh, corrugated sheet metal, and cause a section of that roof to collapse. So there won't be any roof operations, but when it's done, there'll be a big pile of steel that y'all can take the scrap and hopefully recover some, uh, uh, some of the expenses out of this. Uh, it takes time because our people train periodically and the training on this particular building would be on Saturdays. Uh, it, that is a access problem for people in the uh, solid waste uh, facility behind the building. Uh, so we have to make sure that we have places for our, for our trainees to park uh, and that we don't obstruct the road in and out. Uh, there are some old septic tanks in there, so we've got to make sure that we have those staked so that we don't run over them with fire trucks and have fire trucks now uh, in a collapsed septic tank. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the prep issues. We've uh, had the electricity uh, removed from the building and the drop has been rolled back to the pole. Uh, Mr. Lilly has talked with the local propane supplier in the area and he's, uh, they've removed the uh, propane tank that's out there. Uh, it was an exposure. Uh, it is not something that happens quickly. We're talking about two months, maybe as much as three months down the road before we get to the, to the final time to, to uh, take the building to the ground. Uh, and we have to work within our members' own schedules because sure. they have jobs too. And for them to, to donate a, a whole day uh, for volunteer work, uh, it, it, it's a commitment on their part. So we have to be sensitive to that. So if there are any questions, uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer this. Okay, we, we talked on the phone about um, the days because the dump site is open on a Saturday. Yes, ma'am. Uh, did we switch the day to a Sunday? Well, the burn day will be on a Sunday. Yeah. That way there will be no traffic in and out of the, of the dump site, of the solid waste site. Uh, we will train on Saturdays because there's not going to be any fires involved. We may do smoke training, but w there will be no active burning in the building on Saturdays. Uh, and like I said, we're sensitive to that because we know that, that uh, getting rid of your garbage can be critical. So we want to make sure that uh, the citizens in the area have access to the solid waste facility there. Uh, and the property is maybe a little bit more than an acre. Uh, and one of the things that we would ask is if we can get a, a close mowing or brush hogging in the area so that we don't have that uh, uh, exposure uh, as a in-stage operation. Uh, we, we could come and mow it, but we're mowing county property with private machines and oh, we allow <laughs> I know my wife. My wife mows the right of way, and I haven't had the any complaints from the highway department. So, um, well, bridge managers in here, don't. We? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I have two questions. One, is 
is for our legal counsel, um, Mr. Uh, Fultz. Did you see any issues with the, the donation or? No, uh, so the form that was provided they brought to me, I tinkered with the identification paragraph. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to entirely change the form uh, because they provided it and it's obvious they've used, it seems to me they've used this form in other circumstances. The auditor has asked me about whether it should be uh, real property, should it say donation of real property. Technically it's probably donation of personal property when we're detaching the building from the dirt. There's not a mechanism that the county has to donate real property that's permissible. So there's a mechanism, of course, to donate personal property, especially if it's waste or if it's uh, salvage and you're donating it uh, to an entity that's gonna provide some public purpose and a benefit so that you don't have the expense of removal. So th this is permissible, but the details that I'm hearing about mowing the other various other things, you may want to put all of those in an agreement. Uh, you may. If there's a risk that somebody may be hurt uh, and it's over time, you may want to think through and make it, a, and, and I don't want to lawyer the document too much, but you may want to make it a little bit longer to think through those risks that are out there and about who's taking on those risks. Um, I had the, a conversation with Commissioner Cox about this. I have not been out to the site. I, I, all I know about it is what Dave has told me and all I know is this document, uh, to be honest with you, and then what we've heard today from the Chief. Uh, if you have any of you have any concerns about it, I would suggest go out, take a look at it, make sure you want to do this, make sure everything's been removed, um, make sure that somebody's looked at it to be sure there's nothing that's hazardous. I mean, that's, that's a good point. There may be some hazardous substances that may exist there or may have existed there. If you have any of those questions, please make sure that you're okay, uh, that you, 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 you've satisfied yourself that there none of those issues or that every question you have has been answered. I don't have those answers, so I've not been involved uh, from a ground level to, to see what's going on out there. I certainly trust the folks that have uh, had the conversations and looked at it, but this is a you know, significant deal and, and there's significant risk. And so make sure that you're okay with what, what this undertaking looks like. And if we need to make the document longer than a page, I'm happy to participate with the fire department. Nobody wants to do anything that offends the other side. We just want to be sure everybody understands the obligations of each, of each party in the deal. Commissioner Walker and I have pounded the ground out there when we did the initial observation, but uh, like the propane awareness and making sure we had the electrical taken off of there. Chief, you've been out there. We've been out there twice. So uh, we've actually taped the building to see how large it is, uh, calculated fire flow, uh, calculated fire load in the building. Uh, doing what we're doing is not without risk. Uh, there are succinct hazards in uh, in uh, control of burning uh, a residential structure, it's not like uh, it's not like the burn house at Texas A&M. Right. You put in a fire load, the building itself is non-combustible. All you're dealing with is heat and smoke, and uh, uh, this building uh, offers the risk of uh, structural collapse. Uh, so uh, we understand that risk. Uh, the instructor ratio to student is two to one, uh, and our instructor uh, uh, complement is instructor one, instructor two, and instructor three level personnel on this site. So uh, we're kind of a little overboard on the safety end of it because in, at the That's end okay. of the day, everybody's got to go home. That's right. Everybody's got to go home, and hopefully they go home with knowledge uh, that they didn't have when they showed up that day. and. Uh, they can see the risks uh, that are inherent with this job. You you heard our county attorney's comments. <laughs> Since this is your document, do you have any real concerns with what Mr. Fultz suggested? Not at all. Not at all. The 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 paragraph he added is very consistent with uh, 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 waivers and liabilities for the county. And uh, as a matter of fact, it's also part of our fire department document. Our county with our uh, uh, agreement for. Uh, services uh, with the county for our department. So we're we're comfortable with that, we understand it. Okay, and Mr. Foltz has been the possibility of donation of personal property versus real property. Is that a preference of yours, sir? Yes, Okay. and, and the auditor. Okay. She's a stickler for words. Yeah. I, I'd also like to make the court aware of something else. Uh, we talked about timeline because uh, we had said timeline, we thought, we could adhere to 
as close as possible? We had hoped that this had moved along faster, uh, but it, since it hasn't, it's, it's now going to drag along into the cooler parts of the year, which from our standpoint is, is uh, safer because we don't have to deal with the, the real risk of heat emergencies for our firefighters uh, during training. Uh, but it's because it's dragging along later on in the year, it puts your goals further down the road. And what we would try, like not to do is to keep pushing it down the road. Uh, we hope that we can uh, accomplish this within the 90 day span. Uh, weather dependent uh, on the final day of burn, uh, that's going to determine on the good Lord and what high pressure and low pressure systems coming and how far away it is and what the precipitation is, if any, and what the humidity is. We look at the weather in depth uh, before we undertake a burn day because uh, we have no we have no defined non-combustible area adjacent to us. Everything around will light up and will burn. So we've got to make sure that when we do this, the heat goes up, not south. So another uh, point I talked to the chief about is we were talking about getting that EMS trailer relocated as soon as possible so the oxygen could happen. And uh, the risk with that is it's such a tight location, although it's an acre, uh, a good portion of it is unusable. So everything's kind of packed in together. And uh, we, we were afraid the risk of trying to have a burn with a mobile home that has aluminum siding on it uh, would be, we could water the, uh, it, it, it creates another, a significant exposure hazard, yes. Another exposure hazard to this burn. So, uh, of course, it looks like we would have to delay that move if they're going to do a burn. Uh, the initial, um, I think the initial um, demolition price we got was about $8,500, you know, and they did determine that it wasn't something that they wanted as a donation. We offered it to the Historical Commission. Uh, they looked at it. It was too big of a move, cutting the top off, it's cutting a big the building. building in half. And then the people who came out and looked at it said it wasn't anything uh, that they would want either. So um, this is a route we can go, but do understand that it creates other delays, you know, uh, on Grimes County's part of trying to having this auction and this sale. So I just want to bring it all to the table. At the end of the day, we hope that this event is just one paragraph on the back page of the examiner, not a front page story. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but the educational part the educational, is an opportunity it will for be, our fire department absolutely. to train and bring in expertise where they can learn, uh, further learn more about structure fire. So, that's part of it is not only the demolition of a building but it's also an opportunity for to our further fire knowledge. departments to train and you did speak to other fire departments we have reached out to uh the two adjacent departments in grimes county uh both todd mission uh to our east and uh, plantersville to our northeast and uh, we have received a response from todd mission in, in the affirmative they want to be and we're still waiting to hear what plantersville wants to do if they want to be involved whether or not uh, as a as a uh, procedure, we can do this alone with our own department. We have the personnel, we have the equipment, and we have the resources. Uh, but it's 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 kind of selfish if you don't give the other op other departments an opportunity to perform skills that they don't get to perform except on a real fire. Uh, it's a lot easier. To lay a brick wall when you're not in a hurry because everything's straight level, <coughs> and square uh, a building fire is the same way it's a lot easier to put it out when you know how to lay the brick you know what you're doing so uh, that gives them the opportunity this is how you start the saw this is where you cut this is why you have to cut here so all those knowledge objectives are important we we uh we had planned or we've already talked to the uh 
septic installer. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the septic. He was going to remove those tanks that were located next to the building when we put in the septic to the other side of the road. Right. Is that something that we can proceed with uh, in terms of getting those tanks out of there now? You, and you relocating can. them? You can. Uh, I don't know if you would take the tank out of the ground. I don't know what their construction is. Them. Yeah, I'd just crush is them that, and fill them in. Is that correct? Crushing tanks? Do you know here? Nobody's talking to me. They're, huh? Nobody's talking to me about what you're doing. I believe they're an old concrete type tank. They're not a polyethylene or a poly tank. Yes. So it, it would be, the idea is to collapse the tank, punch a hole in the bottom so it doesn't become a, a bowl to hold water. And then backfill the uh, the uh, resulting column with well, what I've heard dirt. environmental safe crush. Okay, so that sounds like it could be the old types that are concrete. Yeah, and they're going to stay in the ground. Yes, just back. She talked about crushing those. Uh, the other thing that you brought up <coughs> is she was going to ask Road and Bridge could they mold that area so that the septic system could. Uh, installer could work in that area. We, we know that there's kind of a, 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 a spot. low spot there, so you have these weeds that grow that grow around water, places that hold water. So they're pretty tall weeds. So that's part of what he's talking about. Uh, that was something we uh, deemed that we were going to have to do anyway for the septic system to be installed. So. If we could decide today also on who's going to do that, that would be helpful. And we would then know how to move some of the moving parts. Also, Commissioner Bill Bielinski, this is your precinct. Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been out to the site and I understand what you're talking about. Uh, Mr. Harry, can you get the road bridge over and over that for us? If we need to. Okay. And uh, if we can get that done, and then you know the, the septic installer can get out there and, and get on that. If we pushed all of this back to the first of year, so we would have funds to pay the septic installer, so we've lined them up now. And if we could please proceed with that, that would be great. But at the same time, you can do what you need right. to be doing. I, I don't. I don't see any uh, uh, any obstruction to our operation though. No. Okay. You did say he could install that septic system now before we move the building on Yes. There. Yeah. That was the goal. Yeah, well, we need to go ahead and do that if we can. Yeah. We just got one question. Have you, have you observed any hazardous material out there whenever you went out there? The only hazard, we have done no hazardous materials testing. Uh, the only hazardous materials that uh, may be on site are lead based paints uh, on the exterior of the building. Uh, the building dates from uh, the mid uh, 50s. Uh, I think it has been resheeted uh, with uh, a particle board or a, uh, a wood composite board and then painted. So that would be the only hazmat material that uh, I would anticipate being in the building. Uh, we have done no environmental testing and uh, we are not the EPA. We don't, we don't test the house when we go to put it out either. Uh, we don't see any hydrocarbons. We don't see any uh, uh, tar paper roofs. We don't see any composite uh, shingles on the roof which produce uh, uh, car carbonaceous uh, effluent when they burn. Uh, so no, we, we don't see any. I don't see any asbestos siding or shingles or anything of that nature that would actually obstruct us from from proceeding with this operation. Uh, if it if it were an old asbestos shingle building, I'd throw my hands up and say, nope, you got to take the asbestos off of it. You got to remediate it. It's a little hard to remediate lead paint that's 20, 30, 40 years old. Well, probably not 20 years old, but it can be 30 and 40 years old. Lead paint went out in the late 80s. If this is something the court's interested in, I, I would first point out that you do have a burn ban on now, so you might want to yes. wait till that's off. But secondly, 
Um, I, if you want to authorize me to do a little cleanup on it, I, I would like to have the timing in here so that there's no confusion when we leave out today about when Road and Bridge is going to handle their part, what the subject issue. If that timing is supposed to happen first, there's no reason not to have it in this piece of paper. We walk out of here today and people have different understandings. We need to have that in writing. We don't want to be where Road and Bridge is in the middle of uh, their training exercise. And so those kind of details, I guess, is what I'm saying is, I didn't want to tinker with this because it's a form they're comfortable with, but I, I want you all to be comfortable with, from the county standpoint that we've got everything in here that uh, we expect to happen, uh, most especially the concern about folks getting hurt. And, and it doesn't just extend to the folks in the training exercise. I mean, kid or somebody wanders on the site, I certainly trust that the department's going to make sure those folks are gone, but you understand it's a big deal. It's a lot of risk that you're putting out there. And also, as I said to Mr. Lilly, I suspect you all would want him present. Uh, there's no reason he shouldn't be present as the county's employee, as an employee of the county, on site for the well, training exercise. And my thought would be, well, this, this form doesn't say that he'll be notified so that he can be there. So things like that, I guess, is what I'm thinking is uh, we might want to tighten it up a little bit given the amount of uh, risk or possibility of, of some injury or harm that may occur. I did text uh, Catherine to see if she could come over. If we could maybe come back to this, she can tell us when the installer, she can give us a day. Oh, you mean right now? Uh -huh. Put it to the end of the meeting? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'm just telling you, I just want you to hear me say, this is their form. I'm okay with the substance that's in there, but it may not cover everything that you can think of as we sit here today. And if you have question marks about it, let's make sure that we get everything in here that's going to uh, be sure we allocate the risk that we know that is being taken. Well, Chief Vickers, uh, on the term limit of 90 days, uh, it says beginning with the execution of this document. Right. You're going to be needing the entire 90 days. Uh, it may take that long. Uh, it may not. Uh, like I said, it depends on uh, our training schedule. It, it will be there will be on Saturdays, and there will be at least four specific Saturdays. So the fastest you could get this done, if everything, if all the ducks were in a row and everything fell into place, is within uh, 28 days. However. That's not always, uh, it's rather myopic to expect that to happen. Uh, you need to build in a, a cushion in there. Uh, and like I said, on the, on the final burn day, it's going to be dependent on weather. And I have seen, I have seen uh, weather issues uh, prohibit us from proceeding with a burn uh, for as much as three weeks. Uh, we come up on a, on a projected burn day. We will not do this in the middle of the week because people have jobs and they have to be somewhere. So this will this will be on a Sunday, probably a Sunday morning. And when the weather conditions are are right, <coughs> when they're when they're in our favor, uh, that's when we will proceed with this. So we may have to push it off a week, two weeks. We're ready for the burn. Well, we got a cold front coming, and the winds are going to be 35 miles an hour. So we'll push it off another week. When the, when the weather is in our favor, uh, then that will be the last uh, day of the, of, uh, the uh, training, and it will be a, a live burn day. Everything else is primarily skills development. The live burn and uh, uh, the hose uh, maneuvers for that live burn day will be done on the last day. Well, it's, it's up to the court, but it, it, isn't it like anything else if we run, if we executed the document today uh, and the timeline uh, extended past the 90 days, uh, couldn't we bring it back to court? Sure. But, well, you, you, but it also says maybe extended, maybe extended. for an additional 90 right. day okay. period. So, okay. you know, from the time we sign this, effectively it can be worked in six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Hopefully it doesn't take six months. Right, no, yeah. We've got other things to do. Right. Yes, sir. Will you be utilizing the facility or the, the building prior to the burn on multiple days? I mean, you yes, we will be util utilizing it on multiple Saturdays uh, to uh, to teach uh, specific skills, uh, firefighting skills and tools operations. So we will be drilling on, say, this Saturday, not this Saturday, but for an example, 
we'll drill this Saturday and we'll cover uh, the topics for that Saturday. The other topics will be the next Saturday. The other topics will be the next Saturday. And if everything falls in line, by the time we get to the fourth Saturday, we've covered all of our vital topics required for a live burn. We have uh, SFMA and the uh, Texas Commission on Fire Protection Personnel uh, have uh, requirements for you to uh, address before you do a live burn. And whether you're doing it in a, in a private structure, a wood, a ordinary wood frame building, or whether you're doing it up at uh, Texas A&M at Teeks in a non-combustible uh, masonry building, you still got to cover all of those issues. So we make sure that uh, the fireman has the tools to do the job before he steps off the back of the truck. And a lot of those tools are the skills that he needs. If I might address this, the, the agreement that we sent to uh, Mr. Fultz uh, is an agreement primarily structured for private individuals and, and family members, uh, and it's not, a, it's not a, an agreement that addresses governmental entities. And we sent that document to him to, I guess you could say, address uh, the deficiencies for dealing with uh, a county government. And he has the uh, open uh, range to do whatever he needs to do to accommodate that. And we're good with that. Nobody wants to give the open range. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has a timeline already built in that may be sufficient for us to come back, bring it back if we need it to. Uh, I mean, if you've got 90 days already uh, from the execution of the document, then you can extend it an additional 90 day period. Well, that's not the concern I have. Let's say couple other things there's if anybody some some member of the court may be looking at this or considering it for the first time are there any questions you have about wanting to see the property wanting to think through wanted to talk to 911 wanted to talk to environmental wanted to talk to mr walker heck wanted to talk to mr peeler who maintains facilities happens to be this happens to be a county uh, or facility that's on county property if anybody wants to get the questions answered uh, let's not run off and sign a document that we barely tinkered with, let's say. Um, get those questions answered. If, if you're comfortable with it, I'm okay with it, but the auditor would like to take out the word real and change it with personal. I think it's appropriate. Uh, we might want to have an aerial attached to show what building is going because there's only an address that's given. We may want to consider how mowing fits into it, how potentially the crushing of the septic tank fits into it. We may want to question or put in a provision about Mr. Lilly will be given notice and you may want to instruct Mr. Lilly as your employee hey, you're going to be there every training they have. Uh, those kind of things you would think would be in this agreement. And so if you all have those concerns and want to give me just a little bit of time to add those things I just talked about, you could approve an agreement in substance and say subject to Fultz coming up with these modifications not to exceed 10 or 20 pages, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> I, you, if there are things that you have that are concerning to you that you're not ready to pull the trigger that those question marks are too big, then don't pull the trigger, or at least from your vote, don't pull the trigger. But if you're comfortable with this as an idea, I can clean it up or tighten it up a little bit if, if you all want me to do that. When, when I initially presented this idea, it was twofold. One, save the county, the demolition cost, and two, provide an opportunity to for train. one or some VFDs to have training. I didn't know between the time the idea was floated and we get something signed, we got $12,000 worth of conversation and discussion. I mean, I, I appreciate everybody's point of view. Judge, I hear you saying that, but you are on the legal department that tries to avoid risk. If, if if you don't have an employee out there that's overseeing this, and let's say, and, and I, I don't want to say this about the chief, and I don't want to say this about his department, but let's say you don't have an employee that's subordinate to the court who's out there when this is going on, and something happens because uh, Chief is, is sick that day and his replacement shows up and is 
not in his right mind, have to have been conked in the head on the way there. Any number of things happen, and let's say a small child wanders into the facility. We thought we cleared it, we thought nobody's there, and then the, the child gets killed because we burned down the facility. Sure. This this is worthy of the the, hour, the the time that we've talked about it, Judge. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing that point at all. There's real risk here. Understood. I don't want it to be on the taxpayer back. Okay? I understand. So that's that. I think it's worthy of or worth this conversation. Well, and, and and that's fine. But you mentioned twice now about Mr. Lilly being on site. Mr. Lilly has already told me that he would be on site, and I had already advised Mr. Lilly that I wanted to be on site at least. When they did the burn but if it's so, not in the agreement they don't owe us any notice to tell us when they're going to do it and that's what okay. I'm, if we don't reduce it to writing what people's oral understandings uh, is or are uh, and, and i don't any good. and i'm not trying to argue with you but i mr lilly in his role with the vfd vfds does have fairly regular communication Absolutely. and they do a fairly good job of keeping him informed but if we need to have it's stated in black and white why that they're going to... Why have a written agreement at all, Judge? I mean, that's the question. What what needs to be in there? I think every expectation of the parties when you're involving the amount of risk to the taxpayer dollar, I think every idea that we can come up with so that everybody's expectations can be met needs to be in the document. I understand. But as you continue to school me on all the legal implications, I just made the comment, I had a simple idea, and that simple idea is now this big, so no I, we've not made it less we this is not complicated it's just a matter of you're asking the, the legal department do we want to put all these things in writing and the legal department is going to tell you every day or at least as long as i'm part of it yeah they need to be in writing yeah okay and, and we did talk about uh, we did say that you know we can approve it with the intention of adding these things to the document is that what I heard you say earlier. Absolutely. You, you have in the past approved the essence of an agreement, the substance of an agreement, the material terms, and then said to me or my department, let's say, as large as it is, um, that you guys go and add the language that you feel comfortable with to best protect uh, the, the taxpayer. And, and if you wanted to do that, and I'm thinking of the things that I mentioned, whatever those five things are, it's like two sentences. Uh, it, it, so I'm thinking about those things and maybe adding an aerial to it so all of us know what building we're talking about. I, I haven't seen it, been on, done, haven't been on the ground. I don't know if this address is right for that building or not. It is. Uh, reminds me of the, the demolition that just occurred. That, that thing was attached to another building. And if we didn't have a map that showed which part was coming down, that guy goes out there with his own understanding and demolishes all of it and that log cabin or whatever that is that everybody wanted to stay there is now gone. And so it didn't happen, but we don't have that with this one piece of paper. And so I know I, I don't want to over lawyer it, but at the same time, if, it, if something went awry, we'd look back and say, full time computer can do a better job with the document. Well, I would, I would maybe my personal opinion of it is with the hazards that I know that you've looked at and, and also our attorney is now uh, letting us know about if this document could be placed on a, the next agenda so that the other if the other commissioners want to go out and look at the property uh, I mean this is a decision we're making as a court to uh, do this and if it pushes the timeline back then we realize that's part of the deal of trying to donate a building to be burned we want to consider all the hazards everything we don't want to rush into something the other option you have is bulldoze it down you know so i'm just you know giving y'all those options that i know the judge is trying to go this route and, and it may work out but if not you still have another option and that's the definition of the deal we are in no hurry and we are at your disposal thank you so much well, i think you know i surely appreciate the judges discussion about trying to get this uh, done relatively simple but at the same time i think we as court need to listen to our legal advice and it won't hurt anything i think i think if there were any objections to what the county attorney has said thus far, the chief would have indicated his objection. Um, I don't think it hurts anything to put what I've heard into the contract. I think it protects everybody involved. 
Um, and as far as Mr. Louie is concerned, I mean, I think he would be committed and show up when needed, but there is going to be a coordination effort uh, between the fire department and Mr. Lilly. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Lilly, and, and we're talking about the holidays are coming up and we're working in the next 90 days. So uh, to rush something like this, it, it, you know, it, it may not be a best practice. I think we probably ought to step back and maybe get this document where the county attorney is comfortable with it and where the court's comfortable with it. The fire department, everybody is a comfortable. May I ask that we put this document on a future agenda? You may. Thank you. you may. I think we could probably get the ball rolling with it and, and, and take the attorney's advice and, and have it approve it with his uh, additions to the, to the contract. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I definitely. Uh, I don't want to don't slow down the sale of the property and moving and everything. Sure. Kind of keep it, keep it, keep it ball rolling on that. I think but, I mean, I think in the best interest. Right. I think Kenny Turney brought up some other points that we need to take into consideration. That doesn't mean we can't execute it. We've done it before with contingent on Kenny Turney's approval and fire department's approval. Probably so. Yeah. Commissioner Walker, did you say uh, Liz is on her way over? Is that what you said? To no, I wasn't able to get in touch with her. Oh, okay. Um, so, Mr. Walker, do you know if, if, if the agreement was approved today with the expectation that the place would be mowed? Do you know how long that would be before your folks could get to it? We'll get it mowed before they need it mowed. Okay. And, you know, they don't want it mowed today if they're no. not going to do the burn for 90 days. We'll coordinate that. Okay. So, if, but if I'm drafting the agreement, do I say, that are we saying be, they need to contact that you that to coordinate? Be written into the agreement. What's that? That doesn't need to be written into the agreement. <clears throat> I disagree with you. And also, if, if it's not based upon, um, if, if some of it is when, when you burn, but we're also moving the septic system yeah, out of yes. the way. Yes, and that needs to be cleaned up before the septic system can be installed. Because we can go ahead and install the septic system if it's, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks, if, if it's on the guy's schedule that's going to do it. Yes, we've so. already talked about it. And I, I don't see that that needs to be on, on the Either. I mean, if Harry says he's going to take care of it. I, I, know, I know that it will be done. So, you know, the septic system is somebody else's contract, not our yeah. contract. Well, well, I will say Here, this. Here's, here's, here, let me say this to you. If, if you sign the deal today or approve the deal today, theoretically, they don't have any obligation to notify anybody and they go start doing it. Why do we have anything in writing at all if you guys don't want to put the expectations of the parties in writing? They will notify us when they're ready so we can mow it. They will notify and coordinate with us so we can tell them whether the septic's going to come out or it's being crushed or it's not going to be crushed. We're just talking about what notification is going to be mandatory between these folks. The people in the room today could all be wiped out. It could be all different people tomorrow with the same obligations between the fire department and the county. And nobody remember what happened here other than what's in this piece of paper. Now, if you guys want to put it on a napkin and say they'll burn it when they want to, and I'm sure they'll call us about, you know, whatever they want to talk to us about, fine. But you don't need me for that. I, I would suggest that we make the modifications that the county attorney is suggesting that we make and bring the document back to the next agenda. I think that's fine. Would you also add that the fire department will notify the county on any day the training is conducted, and we will also notify the county on the day that the final burn is to be conducted. Chief, do you know how you far in advance you'll know of those things? So how, how many? You'll know within a week. You'll know a, a week in advance. <coughs> so if it's going to be next Saturday, we will call you that Monday. It'll be Monday, so you'll have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, so it, it'll be within that week. Yes. Who are you going to notify? Who's going to be My point of contact is our emergency management coordinator. Y'all don't need me in your hair. Oh, excuse me. I'm <laughs> <Quit bragging>. <laughs> 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 we'll overlook that. <laughs> so, Mr. Pulse, yes, sir. if we put this back on our next agenda, is that going to provide you adequate time to probably 
dot your I's and cross your T's of what we've had in this discussion today? You bet, Judge. Okay. We, we will have it ready for uh, folks to take a look at uh, no later than Monday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could y'all shoot me a copy too? Absolutely. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'll be at yahoo.com. All right. And, and Cherie will make sure that you get a copy along with Mr. Lilly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Judge. All right. We're now going to go to uh, agenda item number 15, Grimes County Justice of the Peace, Precinct 3, Judge Laughlin. Judge, you want to talk about dead bodies, don't you? Yeah, and it's not going to take near as long as that building, did <laughs> <coughs> uh, Last month, I was uh, made aware that uh, we had a gentleman named Marshall White who had opened a business in, Planner, in the Plantersville area called the Third Coast Mortuary Service. And myself and uh, Judge Underwood had a meeting with him and talked to him at, in depth. And uh, he is basically wanting to be placed on a rotation that we have for the funeral uh, homes here in, in the uh, county that we use when we have to call them. We feel like we need to add another person if we can because we've had some 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 changes, I guess, in in our standard funeral homes here, where they're not able to respond all the time when we need them, and it's left us on the scene for a couple hours sometimes in the middle of the night trying to uh, figure out what we need to do and who we can get. Uh, we requested. Uh, I, I talked with uh, Jessica about this, and we requested some. Uh, uh, References. He's been in the mortuary business for like 18 years, but he has not owned his own mortuary, but he's licensed. He uh, does have uh, what he needs to transport, and he's provided us with uh, his fees and stuff, which are pretty much in line with what we're paying with the other uh, funeral homes at this time. Um, and his name he, is Third Coast Mortuary? That's the name of his business. His right. name is Marshall White. Right. Did you have something else that you wanted to include in this? Um, I passed out the cost comparison that we uh, drew up. Yes, sir. And it's just based off of what we're currently been paying at the funeral homes. And so after speaking to Mr. White, it was $2 per loaded mile. His fee to um, to come out was four fifty, but he said it's about a hundred dollars for the bags and three fifty for the first call is how it's broken up, and then two dollars for loaded mile after that. So we just kind of did a, a Google map on from his point of business, which I think is close to the Renaissance Festival, yes. if I'm not mistaken, and then to our places, our autopsy places like Central Texas Autopsy, and just um, just came up with a figure. About two dollars. Okay, this is just he won't do any of the okay. You put autopsy, I'll let you explain your paper. So, so the, the top portion because all of this relates to the autopsies, and so you have the autopsy service rates, which is the we have the four different vendors the Montgomery County, Central Texas. The where they come into play is these funeral homes have to um, transport the bodies to these different places. And so the second box is your funeral home rates. Okay. And then we just put the indigent cremations on there. Um, but and he doesn't do... Uh, no, so he is just in the funeral home rates. Yeah, he's, he is simply offering a business to transport not to, just to transport. yeah and, and he can store for a short period of time he does have some refrigeration which is another plus because we only have one facility in the county that have refrigeration and he had mentioned that it would be for to refrigerate for two to three days it would be a hundred dollar charge yeah so about approximately thirty three dollars and the only reason or i said the only reason one of the main reasons why you even bring this to the court at this time is because the the local facilities have not been able to provide the service that the JPs, the Justice of the Pieces, believe that they need. Or it's a delayed service. Yeah. Uh, it's just another yeah. option. If you take Noble's Funeral Home, Jeffrey is basically the only one working it right now. Uh, for whatever reason, Douglas is not able to do like he used to. Their long-term employees had some health problems and he's out, so Jeffrey's kind of on his own. So if he's tied up, you know, 
he has to call Travis Stackhouse, who is his brother-in-law, but uh, he works for several mortuary services. Anyway, there's delays and there's there's some little things that have changed, and uh, to have a third one in the mix would be a benefit for us. Uh, plus, it just makes it a, a lot more expedient. You don't want someone that's denied to just have to lay there for two or three hours. No, I understand. I understand. So, and then you called me. What are your thoughts on it? And your your request was. Does that need to come before commissioner's court or to the auditors and yeah. say, uh, your transparency, let's yeah. let's put it out there and let's have a discussion it's, on it's it. Not, it's not like we're having a formal contract with him or anything, right. but it's just informational purpose. Okay. I move to approve the addition of third coast mortuary services to the rotation. Second. Do we need to add uh, transport? Hey, one, please. Can I say something for just a moment? No, ma'am. Please. No, ma'am. Okay. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 15 by Commissioner Chad Mallett and a second by Commissioner David Dobinsky. And now Commissioner Walker in our comment period would like to make a comment. Um, this is for transport only and storage, you say? Yes. He, he does not have a facility to actually have a funeral. All right, so he's not in rotation for services, like funeral services. We don't have anyone in rotation for that. That's up to the family. Just, just, yeah. Okay. All right. yeah. the, only, the only thing we're doing the rotation is calling someone to respond to a scene and pick up the, and transport if we need to go to autopsy or whatever the case may be. If it's not, if, it, if that's not what we're doing, then the family decides what funeral home they want to use. Okay. And the county declared, well, uh, up to this point, the county has used just funeral homes for transport. Yes. That's what it's the only, the only one we had that were able to transport. The court now recognizes Ms. Brenda Williams. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, have you talked to Judge Acord? Oh, uh, when? Or how recently? Well, no, the reason I'm saying, he get, he given me a call, too. He wanted to add Madisonville, so I probably will have to come back uh, to the court. And it's one more. So... Uh, uh, I have not had that conversation with him. Okay, he just, he get, he give me a call. So if that's something that he wants added to the list, then he ought to, he ought to bring, submit it, bring it to Gordon, and we'll add it to the list okay. if appropriate, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jesse, did you have something else you were saying? Just to clarify, when it's the funeral, it's funeral home rates just for the transport, because okay. that's all we've used, or that's all we are currently using. Now we're adding this additional mortuary. All right. Thank you. Yes. With that, is there any other discussion or comment? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. to the list, sir. Very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Judge. Ma'am? No, ma'am. Yeah. Commissioner Chad Mallett made the motion, and Commissioner David Dobienzi seconded that motion. We'll now go to agenda item number 16, Grimes County Clerk Vanessa Brzezinski, possible consideration and approval of revising the jury donation form for county court at law jury trials by adding a donation to the Veterans County Service Office in accordance with SB, which would be Senate Bill 456, which amends section 61.003A and C of local government code and chapter 434 subchapter b which went into effect september 1 2021 see attachment number 16. good morning um so currently when we have jurors come to serve on a jury they do currently have the option to donate their jury payment to um several um organizations um, and we do get quite a few people that do want to donate their jury pay. They get $10 um, for the first day, and if they're selected, they get $40 for each additional day. Um, so right now, um, they can donate to the Compensation to Victims of Crime. They can donate to the Child Welfare Board of Grimes County. Or they can donate expenses incurred from detaining juveniles alleged to have engaged in delinquent conduct. So with this new bill that was passed, 
um, by Congress in the state. Um, they have added um, a donation for Grimes County Veterans Office, which we do have here in Grimes County. Um, and so um, I would like to add that um, as a possible option for people to donate. And I just, for clarification, just included the law that um, explains that <coughs> this is something that is um, required to be approved in commissioner's court. Can, can we apply this to all courts? Um, we have district court, we have the JP court. Can we apply this to all jury donation? Well, I would say yes, but that's not what the agenda says. And therefore, I don't know. I don't want to step out of the legal bounds, Mr. Fultz. Uh, you want to put a and I'm not picking, together, and I'm, Judge? And I'm not picking at you. You're training me well. So. Uh, no, I think you'd be fine. I mean, it's, it's not that big a deal. It's a it, it's, it's really about form of uh, getting this done. And I don't think you're going to have anybody that would show up and object and say, no, no, we don't want the court to approve folks having the ability to donate. Uh, their jury pay. Uh, so we so could I'm okay with it. we could change the language just to say form for all courts. Uh, yes. Well, uh, yeah, county courts. It wouldn't be a municipal court. You wouldn't have any control well, over municipal okay. courts. Okay. okay. Uh, I did have a conversation with Diana Lafleur, our district clerk, and she was in agreement that we should probably have one standard form that we could both use. Okay. Um, if that's okay with y'all. So who would be in charge of making that form standard? Mm -hmm. We do our own forms, but they all say this is the same. Yeah, I like hers would say district court, and mine would say county, county court, county court but it would, would be the same JP language. Or whoever. Okay. And, and there is a sample form attached. Um, if y'all are in agreement with using that, um, we can. Because it's just it's the, the the addition is that very bottom line of, above the signature, Correct. where it just says donation for Grimes County Veteran Office. LGC 61.003 and Correct. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I just wanted to add that I spoke with uh, our veterans, uh, Jay Lafferty, uh, and we got it on the agenda a little too quick and he couldn't be here today, but I wanted him to speak to y'all so you would know. But after I spoke with him to tell him that it would possibly be offered, he said he has people that come and need a tank of gas or need to stay overnight somewhere and he doesn't have funds and he said that would be great for those funds and i, I think putting this on here will get yeah. a lot because i'm sure we have a lot of veterans that come to jury he either has no confidence in you or no confidence in me because he shared the same request of me now maybe he just wanted to double down that one of us would remember but i've got the notation here but you're exactly right well i didn't know until yesterday well I didn't know until yesterday that he had spoken with you okay. uh, because fine. when I went to yeah. try to get it all coordinated, no. I realized <laughs> but, he said but, he wasn't going to be here, so he had spoken with and he, you. And he made some points that I hadn't even thought of, like the, the fact of giving somebody 20 bucks or 40 bucks for a tank gas, of gas or anything, just yeah. to go to the another VA office that could help him. And it, it just it sounded to, to be a very reasonable request. And then I did have a, a question for the auditor. And would this be, go into a special line item, Jesse? So or how would that work? Right. We, um, we'll set up a special revenue account, and just as we do for GHRC, where we keep up with how much is. We'll set, we'll set up a special revenue, and probably it sounds like a separate expense line as well within his budget. Okay. And then we'll just do amendments as on a monthly or quarterly basis or whenever he has a need for if the money does come in, the donation, or donated money. With that being said, I'm going to make the motion on agenda item number 16 that we revise the, uh, all of the jury donation forms for all of the county courts within Grimes County to address the language that we have discussed in this discussion. Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 16 by County Judge Joe Faust, second by Commissioner David Dobienski. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We'll now go to, thank you. 
Uh, Road and Bridge Engineer Harry Walker, agenda item number 17, consideration and possible approval of the replat of King Oaks, section 3, lots 447 and 448, see attachment 17. And remind the court we have a public hearing addressing this request at 845 this morning. And there was no opposition at that time, Mr. Walker. Again, this replat is combining two existing lots in King Oak Section 3 to make one larger lot. Um, as was discussed in the public hearing, there is some floodplain property at the or area on the back of the lot, which uh, is probably part of the motivation for doing this. But they have met our criteria and we're recommending approval of the replat. I move to approve, re approve the replat of King Oak Section 3. Lots into lot 447R. Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 17 by Commissioner Chad Mallet, second by Commissioner Dave Dolinsky. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Agenda item number 18 discuss and take action to select the name for the new public road from Highway 92 the Justice Center. Mr. Walker. Just to remind you all, when we worked out the agreement for the donation or the land swap uh, for the right away for the new access road out to Highway 90 from the Justice Center, it was specifically designated that that would be a county road. Um, if the county road, we have to give it a name. Uh, we can give it a number. Um, the next available number would be County Road 280. Or y'all can choose to give it a name, you know, honor somebody, or you know, whatever. But in the not too distant future, they're pouring concrete over there today. Uh, the road will be ready to be used, uh, and we need to go ahead and take care of getting the signage and everything put together for that. So okay. We'll need to know what the name is. So. I have a notation from uh, one of the departments that. If and when we do pick a new name for the road, that it needs to be run by CAP over there at 911 to make sure that that name is not already somewhere in the county. The second thing I'm going to say is that when Jay Lafferty visited with me on Monday knowing he wouldn't be here today, he said, I don't know what y'all are going to come up with. He said, but I recommend Veterans Drive. So. We've got County Road 208 as a recommendation. We have Veterans Drive as a recommendation. Uh, any other recommendations or thoughts, commissioners? We are located on Veterans Memorial. In there is, Minnesota. yeah, there is a Veterans Memorial right. already. That might be a little too close for good direction finding. I don't know. We got County Road 210, then County Road 211, and County Road 212. Messing with you. She <laughs> got the old six. I don't have a suggestion. I was just all the way but I, Well, but I told him I'd pass on his <coughs> wording. So, and, and, and again, whatever, I don't know that we can decide, but we can go with the recommendation and get it passed through uh, 911. Does she have, have, have to look at the numbers, like if it were 280? Well, she would have to verify that there's not a, a duplicate, but there is not a 280 in the county already. So, like I said, if we continue with just the, the numeric naming, uh, 280 would be the next number in precinct two. So, but if it's in precinct two, you like it to be in the 200 series. But that changes again. Yeah, that oh, changes. I, I know, I, I know. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple because it didn't. I get it. Things have changed over time. But yes, they, it wouldn't probably make a lot of sense to give it a 400 number, for example, right, right now. I don't know. Commissioner Cox might want it to have a 400 number. I think, yeah, well, <laughs> I think Commissioner Walter's got some 400s as well. That's right. Okay. So have you had any names submitted to you? I know that uh, Jim Westmoreland, when he, when he was talk, we were talking about the properties, uh, he said he thought it ought to be named Don Sal Boulevard or Road or what have you, Sheriff Don Sal. And uh, 
that's all he said about that. But. Well, it can be 280. That's pretty boring, but. Uh. <laughs> but it works. Can we name it after Jesse Grimes? I don't know. Because there's a Grimes Street, but I don't think there's a Jesse Grimes Street. Is that a recommendation? Is that a. Yeah, he's our county's namesake. Well, I know that, but I'm just. <laughs> Is that Just what you're offering? In case it is that what you're done. offering up for consideration? Yeah, sure. Okay, Jesse Grimes. And I love that J E S S. It's S S E. Yeah. <clears throat> that would have to be. How, how? What is your drop dead date for getting that hearing? We just need it by the time the roads officially opened, which I think will coordinate with the opening of the Justice Center. Okay, because it's got to have 28 days of cure once it's poured and it's just starting out yeah, pour. It, yeah, I, th I think we're on track to have the road ready before you're ready to open the Justice Center for business. So, okay. like at that point, uh, it would be... If you're watching out there in Facebook land and you have a legitimate suggestion of what you think the name of that road could be or should be, I'd ask that you to contact your commissioner or the county judge's office. And uh, I don't know, Connie, if you can put a little blurb in your write-up that will address, court, if you're in agreement, will address this again next agenda. And in the meantime, we'll get the uh, review of Veterans Drive reviewed and Jesse Grimes is not gonna have a center thing, so it won't be a boulevard. So you want a street, street road drive, street. what? Street, dress, dress Jesse Grimes Street. Okay, so we'll get, and you say 280 is a good county road number already. So we'll put those three on the list thus far. You're gonna make this so complicated. Oh, don't you talk to me about complicated. Oh, you're gonna make this complicated. <laughs> no, 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 no. We get enough calls about holes in the road. <laughs> well, we get we get one shot. Let's do it right. I just wanted to burn the building down. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're gonna put that on the next agenda, Mr. Walker, but we'll move post haste, okay, sir? All right. That'll I'll take fine. you to agenda item number 19, consideration of possible approval of the Brazos Ridge Platte on Highway 90, uh, excuse me, on Highway 30 in Precinct 2, our attachment 19. I'm going to ask that we table this item. Uh, the closing on that property was delayed. That is not taking place yet. So until it closes, um, we're going to suspend the flat. So are you going to resubmit it when it needs to come back on? We will. Okay. And it's not necessarily on the next agenda? No. Okay. I, we need to wait on them, get their closing taken care of, and then we'll move forward. Okay. Agenda item number 20, consideration of possible approval of the flat of independent acre subdivision located on County Road 413 in Precinct 3, or attachment 20. This property is located on County Road 413, um, just across the railroad tracks from Trinity Head, uh, just north of Highway 6. <coughs> We're dividing the property into five lots, great venture lots, that they do have public water available, so there'll be, these lots are in typically an acre and a half. Um, they are making a, a donation or dedication of some right-of-way on, on County Road 413, particularly that first bad curve north of the railroad. Uh, we'll be able to smooth that out, uh, which will be a, a real benefit from a safety standpoint at this location. We're recommending uh, that this plant be approved and presented. Any questions? Can you tell me who the property owner is close enough to the north? Uh, uh, the Brazos Ridge Plant. Is that where it's located? To the north of uh, William and Deborah Phillips. Okay. It's, it's shown on the plant there. Such the record property on. Yeah. 
and this is going to be right outside the city of Minnesota, actually, probably. We, yeah, we checked. It, it is not in their ETJ, so the, the city is not involved in the planning process. Right behind Kennedy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, and suggest what you can do with seven acres. We talked about seven acres. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if there are no further questions, then I make the motion. And we'll approve the plan of independent acres subdivision. Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 20 by Commissioner Barbara Walker, seconded by Commissioner Philip Cox. Is there further discussion? And hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. We'll go to agenda item 21. Ratify a special road use and indemnification. <coughs> for Axios Energy Services on CR 186 and Precinct 1, our attachment 21. Yes, well, while we're looking for that attachment, can I ask you a question right yes. here on the form of item? Are there any deed restrictions? Not that I'm aware of. On the, the special road use permit, um, I encountered a drilling crew, not a drilling crew, but an oil field crew uh, parked on the highway side of Highway 39 here a couple weeks ago uh, looking for where they were trying to go to move in a rig to do a work over on a well. I talked to them and to them they needed a permit for that which they did not have uh, it's a short-term project they're just plugging an existing well so I approached the judge and got him to go ahead and sign the special uh, use permit and then we're now bringing it to court to uh, ratify that agreement this is on County Road 186 just north of Highway 39 an existing well that they just had to come back and plug. So, so the equipment was on site. It seemed like the appropriate way to handle it. You said it's on County Road 186? Yes, sir. But it says 168 on this. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's 168. <laughs> I moved to ratify a special road use and identification for Axios. Energy uh, services on the county road 168. Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 21 by Commissioner Chad Mallett, second by Commissioner David Obiensky. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. We'll go to agenda item number 22. Consider and approve. The resolution to receive the grant for the indigent defense program and authorize the county judge as signatory. It's our attachment number 22. <coughs> judge, you don't have to say anything about Road Bridge Report. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Eric. Please, Road Bridge Report. Uh, I'll make it short. They were paving again. A little luck and everything works no, nothing else breaks down this week uh, we will finish our second course uh, paving if not this week it'll be next week we have been having some equipment issues that have slowed things down but uh, we're getting there uh, we've also completed the first phase of the uh, grant project that Todd Mission has on Rainfair Drive uh, helping improve that they receive grant funds, the county is being reimbursed <coughs> for doing the work for them. Uh, we were able to get in there and, and do some major repairs on the base on Renfair Drive ahead of the festival. Uh, so they're very pleased with that. And it was an interesting experience for some of the guys on the crew that had never been anywhere around Renaissance Festival <laughs> before. <laughs> it's an interesting it's a world. 
did, since, and I'm sorry, I apologize for skipping over your road and bridge. Have you had any more comment on the 1774 construction south of Todd Mission? Because when I had talked with Chad, he had said that they were going to at least he thought at least they would have asphalt on two lanes. They have promised that to the city. I know um, they've been working diligently towards that. That project has just been problematic. Sure. Um, they, I've been down there nearly every day recently, and they're putting base material out. Um, festival starts this weekend. I don't know that they're actually going to have any asphalt on the ground in time for the the festival to open. The last report uh, the city manager gave me he said second or more likely the third weekend of the festival they would have asphalt down. Okay. Thank you. I've got a lot of calls on that. Sir? I've got a lot of calls on that. Oh, yeah. Regularly. Thank you. All right, let me refresh agenda item 22. Consider and approve the resolution to receive the grant for the indigent defense program and authorize the county judge's signatory. It's our agenda item number 22. Resolution, whereas the provisions of the Texas government code section 79.037 and Texas administrative code chapter 173 Counties are eligible to receive grants from the Texas Indigent Defense Commission to provide improvements in indigent defense services in the county and whereas this grant program will assist the county in implementation and the improvement of indigent criminal defense services in this county and whereas Grimes County Commissioner's Court has agreed that in the event of loss or misuse of the funds of the funds Grimes County Commissioners assures that the funds will be returned in full to the Texas Indigent Defense Commission. Now, therefore, be it resolved and ordered by the county that the county judge of this county is designated as the authorized official to apply for, accept, decline, modify, or cancel the grant application for the Indigent Defense Formula Grant Program and all necessary documents to accept said grant and be a further resolved that the county auditor is designated as a financial officer for this grant. There's no uh, other discussion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution for the grant for the indigent defense program and authorize the county to Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 22 by Commissioner Barbara Walker, seconded by Commissioner Philip Cox. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. And I have a non hole punched copy right here. go to agenda item number 23 consider and take action to approve the contract with grant works for the American Rescue Plan Act administration services and authorize the county judge's signatory I move to approve the contract with grant works for the American Rescue Plan Act administration services and authorize the county judge's signatory second motion there's a motion before the court on agenda item number 23 by Commissioner Chad Mallett, seconded by Commissioner David Omienski. Is there further comments or discussion? I'd make the comment that if Grant Works is watching because it is a rather large amount of dollars that we would sure like to have back within the county if you find that you can run that program for cheaper feel free to cut us a refund check. Are there any further discussions? <coughs> you don't ask, you don't get it. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
That motion carries. We'll go to agenda item number 24. Consider and take action regarding the burn ban and authorize the county judge's signatory. <laughs> we have a burn ban that's in effect. It's in effect from 90 days from the date of issuance. <clears throat> my immediate reaction, I know that I've had, <clears throat> my office has had more than a couple of calls wanting us to uh, remove the burn ban, but I'm quite hesitant to do it at this time because the county did get some rain, didn't get coverage over the, that phone's on. <laughs> but <clears throat> from where I stand with the low humidity that we have in the county, uh, a little bit of northerly breeze, fortunately we haven't had a frost yet, but I'd like to see us keep it in place for until our next regular commissioner's court meeting. I'm open for input or comments. And we do have a chief here. Chief, do you have any thoughts? I'm in agreement with uh, your assessment. Uh, these are the same issues that I've considered. And uh, I don't think that an additional week or two weeks uh, is going to put that much stress on the county. Uh, I know that agriculturally, they would like to have a break between the burn ban and the first frost that comes up because that's going to reinstitute the burn ban. Right. And uh, there, there are a lot of uh, agricultural waste that need to be disposed of. And uh, it definitely be in the benefit of, of the farmers in the area. So I'm, I'm good to hold it for another week or until you meet again. Right, Thank you for your input. Well, I, I think also, I, I don't know exactly what the forecast of rain is, but if we have an opportunity to allow it right now because the conditions are more favorable if we wait another week or two it'll be less favorable so we can potentially put it back on because like you like you said there's a lot of people that are really needing to get some of that trying to get it burned before we might have to put it on for a really extended time we're at a good sure. window right now yeah i've so, had a couple calls requesting it but i think maybe on our next meeting we could potentially you know depending on what we get as far as rain or so what are you suggesting next meeting take, take it off it. no I, I was thinking maybe this week maybe take it off and if it, you know give them that window because we did have a lot of you know pretty decent coverage of rain uh, i know for sure in our area we have quite a bit you know four four to five inches so um and we've had six inches over Fort richards and areas and uh i think down on the south portion of the county <coughs> around Pinebrook, i think we've got about six inches down there but and also want to stress you know burning responsibly as yeah. well so i mean at any time we need to burn responsibly and we, we've had a rash of uh, illegal burns, <coughs> which are uh, required by departments to go out. So I too think we can take it off and put it back on if we need to at the next meeting. Like I said, because we don't, I mean, the forecast it doesn't really look like there's a lot of Sunday. Rain potential in the forecast. Sunday we'll have more rain. We've got, we've got very heavy dues in the morning. Also, and that would be a good time for people to find one. You have a lot of data on the ground. All right, so is there a motion from someone to then remove the burn ban effective immediately? I move to remove the burn ban effective immediately. I'll second and, and authorize county judge to see the There's a motion before the court on agenda mm -hmm. item number 24 by Commissioner Chad Mallett, second by Commissioner David Dobiensky, and that is to remove the burn ban effective immediately. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm gonna abstain my vote, just because I'm on the fence. <clears throat> we'll go to agenda item number 25, receive any updates on the strategic plan. Anybody have anything to submit? Okay, we'll go to agenda item number 26. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number 26 by Commissioner Barbara Walker, seconded by Commissioner David Obianski. Discussion? Hearing none? All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. And just to remind the, the uh, commissioners,